Hi everybody, I'm going to show you how you can code a Tunnel of Doom game. In Tunnel of Doom, you have a character that you have to try to get home as fast as possible by crossing these tunnels. Now if you touch the edge, you have to start all over. And your objective is to get to home as fast as possible and to get on the scoreboard for best time. So let's go ahead and get started. Start by going to File, New, and create a new project. Go ahead and title your project. I'm going to call mine Tunnel of Doom. You can always change this to a more creative name if you want. Go ahead and choose a sprite. I'm going to keep the cat sprite uh, just because it's there, but you can click on any character you'd like. So choose a character that you want to go through the tunnel. First thing we're going to do is get this cat to move uh, like it's walking. So we're going to animate it. Go to events, click on the green flag, go to control, drag the forever block, go to looks and get the next costume block and go to control and weight block. Let's change the weight to 0.2 seconds. Let's test this out. There we go. So now when the green flag is clicked, it looks like the mouse is moving. Perfect. Next, let's make our tunnel. So um, we're actually not going to use the backdrops for this one. We're actually going to make the tunnel a sprite. So go ahead and hover over, choose a sprite, and you're going to click the paint button. And we're going to paint a brand new sprite, which is the tunnel. Make sure you're in vector mode so it's easy to edit and select objects. Click on the rectangle tool. Let's turn outline off. We don't want outlines here and choose a green color for the lawn. Maybe this. And you're going to click and drag and fill the entire space with this green color. Now, we're going to make the tunnel. To make the tunnel, we're going to use the eraser block or eraser tool. So click on the eraser tool. Now, you can see this eraser tool is a little bit too small, so I'm going to change the size to about 75, and that's going to give me a much larger circle to work with. Go ahead and draw your tunnel. You can make it however you'd like. The curvier you make the tunnels, the harder your game will be. So go ahead and make it easy or challenging based on your preferences. So you're drawing your tunnel. Uh, make sure you have a starting area and an ending area. There you go. In my case, my starting area is up here, and my ending area is down there. Perfect. There's one more thing that I want us to do, and that is I'm going to make a body of water in the middle. So to do that, you're going to click on the arrow key okay, and select just the center area, and you're going to click the paint bucket tool, then uh, get a nice blue color and hover over it and click, and that's going to make a body of water in the middle. And this is just to make it a little bit more interesting instead of it just being a grassy lawn, right? All right, so that is it. We are done with our tunnel. So now let's go back to our cat. We want our cat to um, move through this tunnel, right? Uh, so we're going to go to code. Oh, and I think some of you may have noticed already, you can see that my sprite is actually not in the right area. So I'm just going to click and drag it to the right area. There we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go to our cat sprite. First things first, you're going to go to the events button, get the green flag, drag it to the area. Now you may have noticed my cat is behind my other uh, sprite, which is the lawn, and it's too big. So we're going to code it to be a little bit smaller. So you're going to go to looks, change set size to, and I'm going to make it maybe around 25%. Let's see if that is small enough. I, mean, I can't see it. So let's go ahead and make it go to the front. Um, so there is a go to front layer, drag it here. Let's see. Okay, and you can see that's a pretty good size. You don't want it too small because that's going to be too easy. And you also don't want it too big. Otherwise, it's going to continue to hit the sides and then it's going to be really frustrating for your players. So that's pretty good. You can always adjust it here. The next thing is we want this cat to start in the starting position here. So I'm going to click and drag it to the starting position. 
And that's going to give me the X and Y coordinates of where the cat should start. So there it is. And then I'm going to go to motion and you're going to go to go to X block and notice how the X and Y coordinates are already filled in for you based on where the cat is now. Um, so that's going to ensure that every time you click this, it's going to go back to this position. Okay. So now let's go ahead and code for the mouse controls. We want this cat to move with the mouse. So to do that, you're going to go to control, get the wait until block, go to sensing, and you're going to go to touching mouse pointer and pop that in there. Then go back to control, get the repeat until block, go back to sensing, get another touching block, touching mouse pointer block, and ex instead of touching mouse pointer, you're going to click on Sprite 2. The Sprite 2, you can see here, is my tunnel. So um, you can rename it tunnel, but I just kept it Sprite 2. Okay, then we're going to go to the mouse pointer. So you're going to go to motion and click on point towards mouse pointer. Oh, sorry this one, go to mouse pointer like that. So basically this is telling the computer when this is clicked, you're going to wait until my, my mouse is touching the cat. Once it's touching the cat, it's going to follow my mouse until it touches the edge. And you can see once it touches the edge, it actually stops, right? Um, so it gets stuck and you're going to have to try again. So I want my cat to say try again after it gets stuck. So I'm going to add one more block. You're going to go to looks and you're going to say, say, try again for two seconds. That's it. So let's say I do this. I hit the, the edge. It says try again, and then I'm going to have to restart. Now, one last thing we need to do to complete this code is we want this code to run continuously every time we play. So we're going to go to the control and drag a forever block. And we're actually going to put it in between the X coordinate and the say try again for two seconds. And that way, the it will run forever. The next thing we need to add to this game is to add an ending, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add a home sprite to represent the ending. Okay. And you don't have to use the home button. If you would rather use like a type of food or something to signal the ending, you can. And I'm just gonna drag it to the end. Um, now this sprite is a little bit too large, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the green flag. And just like how I did for the cat, I'm gonna go ahead and set the size to something smaller, maybe like 70%. Let me just check that. That looks a little bit better. I'm just going to go ahead and drag it to the correct position so that it looks good. OK, so now you're going to go back to the cat sprite and we're going to add a little bit more code uh, that involves this home. So you're going to go to control, get the if blank code again, and you're going to go ahead and insert and uh, go to sensing and go to touching mouse pointer, go to the drop down menu, and you're going to click the home button. So if it's touching the home button, then you're going to go to events, or actually control, and you're going to go to stop all, and click on uh, stop other scripts in the sprite. Okay. And then you're going to add a event block, we're going to call this broad broadcast, and we're going to create a new message. And we're going to call this I'm home. <clears throat> um, let's add a congratulatory sound. So I'm going to go ahead and add a sound here by clicking on the sound tab and hover over here. And I'm just going to keep mine really simple. I'm just going to use um, like ta-da. So ta-da. There we go. So this is what's going to play when the cat goes home. So we're going to play sound ta-da until done. Oops, you're going to drag the pink ta-da sound here, put it under broadcast I'm home, and then you're going to click on stop all scripts. So go back to control, 
put stop all and you're going to click the drop down menu and you're going to click on this script and that's going to um, <clears throat> release the cat from the mouse control um, so now we're going to drag this right under this go to mouse pointer block right here so go ahead and um, insert that there so this is going to tell the computer that um, you're going to play this. It's going to go through the tunnel, but once it reaches the home, it's going to stop other scripts in the sprite, broadcast I'm home, play, ta-da, and then stop the script. So let's try it. So I'll show you a little trick here to test this out. You can just drag the cat over to the home and just, just so you can test it out that the code works and it does. So that is actually a cheat code there, um, but that is a quick way you can check that it works. Perfect. All right, one last thing we're gonna add is a timer. Um, so it's going to make it a little bit more challenging and exciting if your players can see what the time is that they took to go home and they can go against each other to see if people can beat their best time. So you're going to go back to the cat, uh, cat script or sprite. Then you're going to drag <clears throat> the green flag. We're going to make a new variable. Click on the orange variable sign and click on make variable and you're going to call this time. Then, and you can see there's a time. I'm going to drag it over here so that it doesn't get in the way of the tunnel. So then you're going to go to set variable, set, and then instead of set my variable, you're going to go to set time to zero. Then go to the control area, get forever, get a wait one second block, and go back to variable and you're going to change the time by one each time, right? So if you click the green flag, you should see the timer running. So there you go, it is running, perfect. So now, and every time you click the green flag, the timer goes back to zero, perfect. So now it's gonna be a little bit more exciting so players can see how much time they're taking to get home, right? Um, so one more thing we're going to add is we're going to add the best time, right? So this is going to allow players to see what the best time is, and it's going to challenge them to um, beat the best time, right? So okay, so first you're going to go to the events block and go ahead and choose when I receive I'm home. So when the cat is at home, it's going to receive this message. It's going to start running this code. Then go to control get the if then block, go to operator, and we're gonna use the blink or blink block. So you're gonna pop that right in there. Then we're gonna go ahead and get another operator block, the one that says blink equals something, and pop that into the first blink. And then we're gonna go ahead and go to variables and create a new variable. We're gonna call this best time. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and drag it to this grassy area so it's not going to get in the way of the tunnel. Go ahead and drag the best time uh, variable block here. And you're going to pop it into the first little blank here. And we're going to say best time equals zero. And then you're going to go back to operator. And you're going to drag the blank less than blank operator block. And you're going to drag it into the second blank of this operator here. Go back to variables, get the time block, pop it into the first blank, and get the best time block and pop it into the second blank. Finally, you're going to go back here, you're going to get the set best time to zero block, and you're going to set the best time to the time. So grab the time block and pop it into this blank here. Basically, this is telling the computer when the cat is home, right? If the best time equals zero, this is true when you first start the game, right? When you first start the game, there is no best time. So if the best time is zero, you're gonna set the best time to the time, right? Or if there is a time and the time is less than the best time that's recorded, then we're gonna switch up the best time and set it to the new time. So that is basically what it is telling 
the computer. So let's go ahead and run this and let's test it. There we go. And I'm going to use my little trick there. Here we go. And I'm going to drag it to the home. And you can see here the new time became the best time, right? And we're going to start again. Now, uh, I'll show you another little trick because it's really hard to set this. Um, once you've created a best time, it's going to be kind of hard to beat that best time. So what I like to do is right click, go to slider, and you can set the best time to zero again. So that'll reset that time. And so um, players won't have to struggle because you. And that's it. That is the basics of how to make the Tunnel of Doom uh, game. There's lots of ways you can mod this. You can add background music as you play. You can make uh, different tunnels and from easy to hard and have players move from one level to the next to make it more challenging. There's a lot of ways you can mod this. So I hope you have fun with it and I hope you learn from this video. Thanks. Bye.